And just yesterday, an appeal court ruling granted a stay of execution on the judgment of Justice Kolawale Omotosho of the Faroe High Court, which had nullified all primaries conducted by the APC in River State. What does this mean? The APC can now fill the gubernatorial candidate in Rivers, and this runs contrary to what INE, to INEC's position. Now, the APC has no candidate in Rivers State. That was what INEC had said. Which brings us to our topic for today: election logistics. You're welcome to Nigeria Votes. I am Vivian Oguche, and we begin with the latest news on the forthcoming elections. Now, police in the northeast are assuring citizens of impartial service delivery in the forthcoming elections with the commitment to provide a better security cover as civilians vote. This is to focus on a capacity building workshop organized by the force for men and officers to be able to assert democratic policing. The exercise is an effort to expose the police to electoral acts so that cases of partiality encountered in the force during elections are reduced. A correspondent, Anselm Nuru, completes the story. Leading a normal life in any state of the Northeast Nigeria is almost becoming impossible as violence and terrorism take the center stage. Nigerians in this part of the country do not live freely as worship, business, schooling, politics and civil service lives, among other daily human chores, are done in fear of being attacked by insurgents, cultsmen or related terrorists. As the general elections approach, there appears to be growing apprehension as to what awaits the zone security-wise as Nigeria decides in a few weeks' time. This concern brought these men and officers of the police force together to brainstorm on best ways to provide the needed security cover for citizens, especially in the zone, believed to be delicate as they vote. Knowledge is power, they ought to know what the electoral act says and what is expected of them. In the, few, in the next few days, as the elections uh, kick off with the presidential and then the gubernatorial. In accordance with Democratic State Commissioner of Police, Sabo Omar says, the time to intensify action is now. And I'll share you the police under the President, uh, Inspector General of Police, will in no way going to uh, support any political party against the other. The INEC resident electoral commissioner in Adama State, Kasim Gaydam, loaded the police for the foresight. Uh, the objective, of course, is to ensure that the security agencies conduct their, themselves on election days professionally and uh, ensure non interference, and as well as also to ensure that there is no, no, no partisanship. Respected participants were unanimous that elections can truly thrive in the atmosphere of peace. So there is no time that is better than this for this type of workshop. Now our role here is to ensure that we get a better police force that is in tune with democratic policing. Also, the resident electoral commissioner in Plateau State, Husseini Halilu Pai, has assured stakeholders in the state of the commission's effort in delivering free, fair and credible elections despite having over 200,000 uncollected PVCs in the state. The resident electoral commissioner made this known at a stakeholders meeting involving security agencies, political parties and traditional rulers in preparation for the 2019 general elections. A correspondent Umfano Bang reports. INEC is concerned that potential voters are not collecting their PVCs. The resident electoral commissioner Commissioner in the state said about 300,000 of the over 500,000 PVCs have so far been collected in the state. We have received 512,532 permanent voter cards. Of this number, 311,483 have been collected, leaving a balance of 200 and 1,049 uncollected as at 31st January. In an attempt to prevent pre- and post-election violence in the state, security agencies are collating intelligence for analysis and better security operation. In our part too, I want to assure you that we are prepared to also ensure that adequate security is provided. 
because today we have done even our deployment with all the security agencies involved. Traditional rulers at this event are concerned that voter education is not as robust and widespread as expected. I here wish to acknowledge the political parties to sensitize their members on the method especially of campaigning. Speaking with journalists shortly after the event, the governor of Plata State is confident that INEC will conduct a free and fair election. In the face of everybody and the explanations men, uh, given to everybody, I think people should go with confidence that INEC, this election is going to be very free and fair to everybody. Part of the innovation in the 2019 elections is the introduction of the R modified open ballot system, which allows for transparent voting and result announcement procedures at the polling units. And that'll be all for now. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. So basically, we are focusing on the election logistics and some of the hurdles before INEC ahead of elections. For more perspective on this, I'm being joined by the National Chairman, All Grand Alliance Party, AGAP, who is live for us in Abuja. Hello, uh, Mr. Oke Chikwendu. Are you there? Yeah. Well, thank you for joining yeah, us. Just be still, right? We'll be right back. Before we come to Engineer Chikwendu right there in Abuja, we will be talking to an INEC official. His name is Oluwale Osaze Uzi. He is the Director of Voter Education and Publicity. Okay, I'm being told right now to continue with uh, Chikwendu in Abuja. Uh, as soon as we're able to connect to uh, Mr. Uzi, We'll, we'll get back to him. All right, so let me come back to you, uh, Engineer Chikwendu, right, if you can hear me. <clears throat> Let's begin by taking a look at conflicting judgments arising from pre-election and post-election cases. Now, bearing in mind, some of these uh, come up just days before the election. For example, the Court of Appeals judgment yesterday regarding uh, the APC's participation in the gubernatorial election in River State. Now, do you think conflicting judgments like this affect uh, the umpire's ability to perform creditably well? Yes, um, yeah, thank you very much, Vivian. Obviously, it um, will affect the umpire's uh, decisions or position in matters like this because, um, one, they have limited time to operate because where the voters' cards and the, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the documents you use to, for the voting, I mean, the p pictures need to appear on, the, on it, right? So if they do not have that all cleared up, the people, that the, the individual uh, parties will not be able to show. Like what they had, you know, they had a situation in um, uh, SDP, where they, they are still in court between Jerry Ghana and um, uh, the former Cross River governor. Um, so if that issue is not resolved, who then is going to benefit from that process? You know, because yes, it's a party that is being voted for, but they at the same time, they have to clear those issues. And when you also look at the issue of Zamfara, for instance, um, they obviously have told Nigerians that they did not there was no primaries conducted. So on that basis, they have a good stand to be able to say, hey, this is what we stand for. Since there are two 
conflicting judgments mm -hmm. and they can be able to stand firm on that till that gets to the Supreme Court, then they can take a move or take a final position. All right, Engineer Chikwendo, thank you. I'm hoping that uh, we can hook up to Oluwole or Sazuzi right now. Yes, we can. I just got the confirmation. All right, he is a director of voter education and publicity. Hello, uh, Mr. Uzi. Thank you for joining us on uh, Nigeria Votes today. So I just asked um, Engineer Chikwendo, who is in Abuja, a question, which I believe you'll be able to answer as well. Right, this issue of conf conflicting judgments just days before the yeah. election, does that affect the umpire's ability to deliver properly? Well, I'm sorry, the uh, network is in this class. I want it to be, so I'm, I'm not quite, uh, I didn't quite hear all that you said, but I know you said something about conflicting judgments and the effect on the management of elections, is that correct? Yes, I'm talking about election logistics, and I was referring to the appeal court's judgment yesterday as it pertains to the participation of um, the APC in the gubernatorial election. We also have a, a, a case in Zamfara where INEC says that uh, APC cannot contest, does not have a gubernatorial candidate. So I'm asking, conflicting judgments, right, like the one we have days before the election, does it affect the ability of INEC to perform creditably well? Well, first of all, for River State, I don't think there's any conflict in judgment. There's no conflict in judgment. Um, so the, the courts, uh, two, three cases have gone for the courts. There's been consistency that uh, the uh, River State APC does not have any candidates in the elections, apart from maybe the presidential elections, state elections. For, uh, there are no candidates. So there's no conflict there whatsoever. What I understand happened yesterday was a stay of execution. So that's a temporary ruling. And um, we haven't gotten the judge the ruling. It's not a judgment, the ruling on that for the order. So and um, I cannot comment about what the effect is on the elections. Well for uh, Zamfara, yes, uh, there is a conflict in the judgment and findings of both courts. There's a high court in Guso, which will appear said that um, Certain people are attached to the candidates of the APC because party primaries are conducted. But that contradicts the judgment of the Federal High Court in Abuja, which is a court of coordinated jurisdiction, which found the contrary that no consensus, nothing known to law, the APC did not comply with the uh, uh, provisions of the Electoral Act in selecting their candidates. And as such, interpreting the act that it had no candidate. So, yes, the effect of both judgments are involved in conflict with each other. So unless and until a superior court reconciles that and gives us own judgment, then it's, um, we are left in the bind. Uh, some people say it's between the devil and the hard place or devil and the to see. Uh, it really does affect logistics because um, you know that ballot papers printed have to be done. And now we customize ballot papers according to the number of candidates in each position. And we're talking of not just governorship, as we said earlier, but also to the House of Representatives, to the Senate, and House of Assembly. Okay. So uh, when there's this confusion, there's what do we do? It does affect logistics and things. Um, uh, we're in a bind as to that. But we will get a plan B in the hope that the Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court will resolve it one way or the other. Because both judgments were given on the same day. If one came later, then we'll probably have, uh, follow the later judgment. In the way we have interpreted things, so let us follow the last judgment, and it'll be the last order. Okay, so apart from these conflicting judgments, right, tell us about some of the other challenges you face as it relates to logistics. Yeah, well, okay, even in terms of conflicting judgments and also logistics and printing of ballot papers, Nigeria is one of the few countries where you print ballot papers to currency standards and you use the same security measures over their delivery and their transportation. You have to take out uh, security men to deliver. Uh, what we call sensitive electoral material, which is a strange phenomenon in many countries, but Nigeria is part of our electoral life. And these things are put in the vaults of the central bank in the same way you store uh, gold or you store currency. So the same level of security that's accompanying them. And accompanying these things, we have to use um, tracking devices to track the vehicles, taking them from point A to point B. All the things are known to many other countries, but it's because of our electoral history that we do the thing. We don't want to have that documents of legal health or security measures put in place. But generally, um, the difficult terrains that we encounter are issues. The candidate will be used, and this issue of 
We don't have 100% GSM coverage in the in the country. Not even with 2 2G, two not so for 3G and 4G. So these are some of the uh, challenges that we, we, we encounter as the trauma again, buddy. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uzi. If you just hold on a bit for us, I would like to go back to Abuja, where engineer Chikwendu is standing by for us. Engineer Chikwendu, can you hear me? Right, let me come back yeah. to you. Yes, now, in December 2018, INEC, INEC foreclosed the use of incident form. How? I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uzi eventually, but do you think INEC will be able to correct abuses that might ensue during the general elections without the incident form. I will ask him that question, but do you think, do you believe in the umpire's ability to handle situations? Yeah, well, um, uh, INEC said that they have um, made away with incident form, but you know, they also have this form they have created, whereby if a voter comes to to the polling booth, polling unit, and uh, his, his, his cards don't work, he will be able to vote if the people uh, around are able to identify him. There's a name, he's supposed to put up his phone number and, uh, and, uh, what? and be able to vote in some other form which has been created. So, uh, I mean, rightly, it's no longer called incidence form, but there's a form which still takes in people who their cards do not uh, pass the process and are allowed to vote. So that's uh, a bit uh, confusing. Okay, let me go back to Mr. Uzi. Mm. All right, you, you, you had engineer Chikwendu, right? I'm talking about the incident form. Last year, INEC foreclosed the use of the incident form, right? Because you said you were going to handle things very well the way they, they arise. But I'm going to ask you, do, there is no ruling out abuses ensuing in the forthcoming elections. Uh, what do you call the replacement of the incident form? So the replacement, there will be no form. Okay. But, but if your card is read by the uh, card reader, it means it was issued genuinely. Or if there are any issues about reading your biometrics, you should not be deprived from voting if we're satisfied that that card belongs to you. Nobody should be disenfranchised because there's a technological glitch in the process. So the whole essence is that on the voter's register, which is a mandatory requirement of the law, that the address should be used and picked if a person comes by a condition that approves a condition, we will record there that, look, your biometrics had an issue with the card reader. So you some print and we'll take your phone number. Such that when you put your fingerprint there, again, you can always kind of confirm that these are your biometrics. But after the elections, we will now go back and do, deal with the back end again to ensure that this does not reoccur. If it means recapture of your fingerprint, we will do so. But we, we will now investigate, troubleshoot, and say, why did the card not pick up the fingerprint? We think every other person's fingerprint kind of thing. That is the essence. So we cannot stop any person who has been duly registered and who has come with the DVC and whose name's on the register. We cannot stop that person because of a technical glitch from voting. It will be unfair, it will be not right, and it will affect the credibility of the election. All right, Mr. Uzi, I cannot let you go without asking where things stand as of today. How prepared is INEC for the general elections? Well, we did issue um, a timetable and set of activities, I think, in January last year, over a year ago. And there are 14 line items in that schedule. We have accomplished all of those items in accordance and within the period we said we will accomplish them. I think that tells you the level of preparedness. So basically, the only thing left, there's only thing left, it's, an, it's not an activity for INEC, it's basically a uh, cyst and disease order, which is that campaigns must stop 24 hours to the election. That is what is outstanding for the presidential and national assembly uh, elections. As for the governorship, the only activity left apart from that is that they should submit a list of the agents uh, they wish to have in the polling units to the commission. So, INEC has done all it has to do. Not one single one was extended or we did not have to rush back and say amend the thing. So, we are in, on course and we think we will be everything we have planned. All right, Mr. Ozi, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, now let me come back to you, uh, Engineer Chikwendu, right? The rest few minutes I'll spend with you. Thank you for your patience, right? So you are a politician. Yeah, yeah. Based on what you've been saying so far, yeah. do you think INEC, the electoral umpire, 
is quite ready for the forthcoming general elections. Are you impressed so far with what you see? Well, uh, Vivian, let me get back to what uh, I it's sad that Mr. Ozzy has gone off the line, but um, because I wanted to, because you know, there's an issue about this uh, thumb printing and uh, and putting your phone number. Um, there are three datas, key datas that you need to get. There's no picture backup for the person, which I know that such a question was raised in our last consultation meeting with the um, INEC team. And, uh, you know, I guess they found it overwhelming to have enough cameras to, to back it all up on the 120,000 watts or units, pulling units all over the country. But that is something that is very key. If we have to allow that, all the processes need to be in place. This is an election that people are a bit agitated, that there will be rigging, there will be issues. So, you know, so that you don't leave it up to pulling unit uh, leaders and Rex uh, and all that to manipulate or do their will or do their bid, you know, based on their, what, what they think. So uh, that, that, and that's the same reason we have had issues about the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the document, the, the, the document for they have released for regulating of the of the elections. You know, um, there were issues we had also raised in that. Um, yeah, so many have been changed. Uh, I must admit, the INEC German has done well in that aspect. You know, uh, but I know there are clauses which were I think clause three B, C and D, where you had issues of um, that in a pooling unit that they could, they may decide to open uh, another unit, you know, based on uh, uh, numbers and all that. Uh, so such things we, are, uh, we suggested that they should be expunged completely. But uh, I had two weeks down the line without no other consultative meeting, uh, the documents had been signed off and uh, published to the Nigerian people. And I think in this dying minutes of election, there should be consistent and regular meetings for the major stakeholders too. All right, so what you're saying is you're not impressed with the electoral umpire? Is that what you're saying? And have a guaranteed free and fair election going forward. I, I, I want to find out, is your party caught in the crossfires? Have you been affected by any of these conflicting judgments? You mean my political party? Yes, your party, um, the AGAP. Okay. In, in the past, no, no, but now, no, no. We are, you know? We, well, we, we have, uh, we were registered in July 2017, and um, we don't have any issues, uh, you know, in the courts as we speak. Um, we've tried to have a transparent process of carrying our primaries, and we've been able to have candidates, you know, emerging uh, the different states of the country. So we are we're doing well. You know, one key thing is that if you have a process uh, where you, first of all, you have to, uh, before the elections, you must come up with a guideline so that every participant knows what and what is expected of him or her. And once that process is in place, which we did, and uh, they go through the regular orientation process by the state chairman and all that. And then the elections come and go smoothly. There will be no gray areas for anybody to go to court. So that's what we have. We have no, no court case, not one. Engineer Chikwendo, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. All right, now, uh, that's it. That's our show for you today. But before we go, I'd let you know that we'll wrap things up with our segment, Know Your Candidate. It is important. The electorate should know who they're voting for, right? Until I come your way again, same time, same station. Have fun and stick to STV. Joe Ede, who is from Ogun State, was born in Katsina State, Northwest Nigeria. He attended primary and secondary schools in Katsina. He is an agriculture and irrigation engineer. As an entrepreneur, he started Europe's first ethnic media satellite company in England. He is married and they have two children. Alista Shoyede is running for the office of the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the Yes Electorate Solidarity Party. Alista Shoyede 
believes that the Nigerian who is eligible to vote forms a political structure with which he could win the 2019 general elections. The 80 million of ours, the percentage out of that 80 million that have registered to vote, that is the structure. I'm running as a national leader, not a local leader, not a state leader, but at the national level. Alista Shoide believes in continuity. However, he is a firm believer in the rule of law. Government is the continuation of what is good and rejecting what is bad. So we will not hesitate to continue. But where we know there are things that have not been done for you and I, then we will not hesitate to correct them. But when you're not following rule of law, really, it becomes a challenging issue. And for you and for me, right now, I believe it's not following rule of law that is causing all this issue that we're talking about. Alisa Shoide says he voted into office he would uphold the rule of law, guarantee security, and entrench equality among Nigerians. We the People Nigerian Party is another political party in Nigeria, with Professor Peter Onwagu as its standard flag bearer in the 2019 general elections. Professor Peter Onwagu is a professor of pharmacology, toxicology, and clinical pharmacy. Peter Onwagu was born in Umahia, Abia State. He received his secondary school education from the Anglican Grammar School Umahia. He earned a bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Nebraska. He is married with six children. Problems with we the people of Nigeria goes much more beyond reckless mistakes we make when we vote bad people into office as our leaders. Peter Yu Nwagu, the Reverend Professor, as he is fondly called, says he would work towards providing stable power supply, eradicate unemployment, and will transform the educational sector. He voted into office in 2019.